Hello everyone, I'm Lisa D'Amico and I'm with the Rockland Arts Festival. I have the pleasure today of speaking to Joan Capel about her wonderful artwork. Now, Joan, the piece that you submitted to represent you in the festival yes. is, is just truly beautiful. Thank you so much. So it was a special me, love. <laughs> tell me about that piece. Let's start there. Okay. I can even show it to you. It's right up. Oh, I don't know if you can see it, but it's absolutely it's right up. Can you see it? Um, move it more to, I guess, your right. Yes. My right. Oh, I'm sorry. Then your left. Yep. There it is. What was the inspiration behind this piece? Um, okay. Well, let me just begin with saying um, I'm relatively new to the art world. I just started painting, uh, believe it or not, four years ago. I took a, a course, a beginning course at the Boca Museum School of Art. Anyway, I loved watercolor. My cousin said she was gonna take a course up north and I said, oh boy, that sounds great. I had retired and I took this course so I learned the basics about watercolor and technique and tonal values and everything. And then I just, I always loved the impressionist artists, especially Renoir who, added people to his paintings because the the impressionists did a lot with nature the beauty of nature and the details and when he when he started adding people it's like the, the people just spoke to me um there was so much emotion and they were lively and people dancing and having a picnic and people you know somebody going to water flowers and so i loved the idea of painting people so, and my husband and I have, we just have a bent for um, women on, you know, painting. Um, we have a few of our own from other artists of women. So um, I just, I don't know, when I started painting, I did a couple of florals. I tried abstract. It was all good. But when I found a woman or a photograph of a woman that, that I loved, it just spoke to me. And I, I like to paint uh, women. I've done some men, but I in fact, one is under an umbrella and it's only raining under his umbrella, you know, but I like to paint pictures that put smiles on people's faces. <laughs> so I found a picture. It was a photograph of this. And I actually give them all names. And this one is Lauren. And she's named after my daughter. And the reason she's named after my daughter is because... Um, I had once gone to their house when the kids were very young to babysit and she was wearing a beautiful dress. Not, not like this at all, but she had, it was like, she was kind of turned with her back to me. And I thought, what a lovely pose that is. Um, and I photographed that. And then when I started doing this, um, I had seen another artist do a painting with a poofy skirt like this with all the different colors coming out. And I just started doing it just sort of came out of me. I, I can't tell you how, but it's all the different colors and it just started moving. And um, that's how she ended up on the, you know, on the paper. And um, she was one of my earlier ones. Um so, like, I was inspired by photographs. I mean, I've gone into ladies' rooms and seen paintings on the walls and take pictures of them and, you know, try to do something similar. Or um, I've done a couple that were really pretty um, pretty much copies. I changed a little bit. And on my Instagram side, I've given credit for those paintings to the original artist, you know. So I always do that. But... Very often photographs are just scenes that I see and I and I try to um, just make them my own, you know. Well, you do. And I have to say, there is a beautiful grace in the style in which you paint. So thank you. Your inspiration is really evident, especially for me as a viewer. When I see your work, I know it's your your work right away. I and it really takes me to a place that I don't want to leave. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much. Yeah. And I, how also, wonderful your use of color and your use of black, um, you marry them together beautifully. And that's not an easy thing for an artist to do. And you, it, you've mastered it considering you are a relatively new painter, new <laughs> artist. Um, you could teach a class in that. 
Well, as I said to you, which no one heard when we, you know, when um, we opened up, I said, if I knew what I was doing, I'd be dangerous. So <laughs> perhaps that applies here too. It's not, <laughs> it's, it's not always a thought out process. I did one painting. Um, it's on my Instagram site. I don't have it here because I put some, I'll, I'll tell you in a minute, I, you'll see bits of my work on a board that I have over here, but I did one painting that um, I, I was going to a, a class at, in someone's home and my teacher said, oh, something like this would be nice. And I looked at it and I thought it was gorgeous. And, um, or I had seen it and made a copy of it. And, and she said, why don't you do it in black and white? And I had never done it in black and white in my life. And it was a ball ballerina and her leg was extended and it was, she was in a tutu and beautiful costume. And I did the whole thing in blacks and whites and grays. And I, but I had to make the whole thing was done in black and white and grays, but her little tiny lips were, I made them red. And um, that's a note to my mother who, you know, passed away years ago, who always had her lips to go. <laughs> no, but it was just the, the little touch of red on the top. I mean, she sold, so she's gone. But, um, you know, I have prints of her at home. And, um, and then I did her again, and I did her in colors, and I have her in pale pink. And so I have that at home, too. The original, most of my original artwork is at my home in Nyack because you're talking to me in Florida right now. So um, I can't be in both places at one time. And I I had to say, I, we have a lot of, pa of my paintings on the walls here, but I had to say that um, I had to pick a place. It was either I'm going to, you know, have most of my art up north where I live. We're only in Florida four months. And so I do have some paintings that we keep on the walls here. They are all for sale, but for now they're on my walls and um, and we like the way they look here. So, but I bring them north with me when I come because I've exhibited at some of the libraries in uh, Rockland County and the art cafe in Nyack. And so, um, yeah, and I, and I don't market myself actively as an artist. I guess I should, because believe it or not, marketing and communications was my career, <laughs> but I can't, I'm not good at marketing my own work. So like I have a friend coming today who I did a landscape, just something from a photograph she posted. She didn't ask me to do it. I did it. It was a sunset in Hull, Massachusetts on the Cape. And I just painted it because it was so gorgeous and oranges and, and purples and and she's coming in this afternoon to buy it. So it just, it goes like that, you know. That you are living the life of an artist. Oh my God. Well, I would say that if I had a studio, I'd feel better. I don't have a studio. So I'm sort of, you know, I'm painting wherever I can find a spot, but it I works. Understand. It's fine. Listen, Joan, many talented artists work at their kitchen tables, work outside in sheds. I right. mean- Great art happens everywhere. And it is such a pleasure to speak with you. I cannot thank oh, you. Thank you so much. Can I just show you what I did? I took um, just an aside. I have some of my paintings um, that I put on uh, note cards, blank inside, high quality. And I sell them on Etsy or privately. And I just took some because I thought this was a good way. Now, what do I do? Turn this to you? Yeah. You turn it towards whatever you want. Oh, there we go. Can, can you, you see fall? like the whole thing? I don't know. I can um, see the top of it. Wait. Beautiful. I guess I could move it around. It's hard to yeah. see, but. I can see it very clearly. That's great. So I took like 12 cards and put them on the boards just so you can see, because these are, these aren't the paintings obviously, but they're symbolic of the paintings. And doing note cards is a really nice way for people to have your art who can't afford to buy the originals. Right. So I have um, a friend who she loved. The, I have packs of 10 and I put them in a little gift pouch, an organza gift bag. And she got them and she said, I can't use them. She said, I'm framing them alike in small frames and I'm making a grouping. A so great I'll just idea. show you. Here's one. It's hard to see with the lighting in the house. Oh, you excuse my head because I am surgically fused. So I have to say that my neck is surgically fused. But I, um, 
Can you see this one? I can, it's beautiful. Okay, so she was on the note card scene. And then I'll just show you one other that happens to be right now. She's my all time favorite. And I call her Adama. Let me know when you can see her. Oh, I can see it. It's wonderful. And I can see why it's your favorite. It's so she took, I spend an awful lot of time on the ones, you know, that I really love. And um, sometimes I really amaze myself because I look at these paintings and I, and I think to myself, who did that? <laughs> you know, it's like, it's really funny because there are so many artists who are so talented and, and they've been painting since they're little girls or, or little boys. And I think I just started four years ago, you know, but um, this is one I did early too, that I happen to love. I call her Violetta. Can you see her? Yes, it's gorgeous. And the, that's what I mean about your use of color with black. It is, it's gorgeous. It's just, it's, it's enticing and it's interesting and it has a grace to it. It's wonderful. There's, um, interestingly enough, I mean, because watercolor is, it can be very thin, it can be very thick and, and dark. And this is just many coats of um, a dark violet, but I think I used a gouache because if you're familiar with gouache, which I'm sure you are, gouache gives you that opaque quality. Yes, and that, you get the vibrancy um, of the color. So thing. if you want something really right, right, if you want something really intense, and I think that's what I used. It, I did that one quite a while ago, but I think that's what I used on her. So, so this is it. <laughs> this is great. Um, oh, I there's just one other. Okay. And I just have to tell you this. This one amazed me only because I found a a a picture or a photo, and you see this one. Yes. Okay. I actually I don't draw. That's the first thing I can tell you. So I drew her just like looking at, looking at a photograph and just trying to copy like what I thought was the length of the arm or that. I did that freehand and I still look at today and go, <laughs> how the heck did I do that? I have no idea it's because great. I really do not draw. So I sometimes will do a grid. You've heard of that being done. Yes. I know I heard one of the other artists talk about that. And I'm getting better at copying and doing freehand, but I, I've never drawn in my life. I just, you know, so I think that should probably be the next class I take, but <laughs> I'm too busy painting to take another class. Keep painting. Yeah. And listen, it's for very relaxing. When I moved to Florida, you know, we had retired. And so we're snowbirds down here. And, um, but I love painting up in Nyack too. And, um, it's just very relaxing for me and it's something different. And as I said, I had surgery on my neck, so I'm I'm fused. So I can't do a lot of activities that I would like to be doing, but painting is, I find it's relaxing and it's fun and I can stop it and do something else and go back to it. So um, it really works for me. Joan, thank you so much. And for everyone listening, please follow Joan. We'll include her information for Instagram and so on in this video. And you will go on a beautiful journey with Joan of color and harmony and grace. And you will, I, I promise you will enjoy it as much as I do. Joan, thank you so much. Thank you so much.